<laughs> I told you it's exciting. <laughs> All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Massive Masters Raising Private Capital. My name is Maria Marks, and I'm so excited to have you all here today. If you're listening live or listening later, thank you so much for joining today. I am going to share my screen real quick. I think. There we go. All right. Like I said, this is Massive Masters. We have a quick disclaimer that anyone that we have on this show, we have, do not fully endorse. Please do your own research when it comes to raising capital and who you are trusting. Here at Massive Capital, we are a fully integrated company. We have equity, triple net, property management, development, construction, and education. We are located all across the United States. We have 175 million assets under management and growing. We still have one, one opportunity that we're still raising. It has closed, but you still have an opportunity to get into it. If you have any questions on our current investment, please drop a link in the chat and we'd love to connect with you guys. Today, we have Alex Lovely as our wonderful guest. Alex Lovely was born in Taiwan with a rich Chinese and Japanese heritage and raised in New Jersey. He embodies a vision of inclusivity and prosperity through the Legends Equity Group. A Rutgers Newark alumnus, Alex's real estate journey began with a simple triplex at age 27, inspired by the transformative insights from Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and A Course in Miracles. For him, real estate transcends property. It's all about community, legacy, and global abundance. Now owning and managing over 800 units of storage and multifamily properties, Alex leverages his experience and the wisdom of mentors like Jim Rohn, Grant Cardone, and Marianne Williamson to eradicate poverty and make real estate widely acceptable at the heart of all of, it, of, all of his commitment to family and communities he serves. Through the Leg Legends Equity Group, Alex plans to disrupt the status quo of private equity and inspire the next generation of fund managers and teens. Alex, we are so excited to have you here today. Oh, I'm so excited to be here today. <laughs> Thank you for having me. No problem. I'd love to have the audience kind of get to know a little bit more about you. So give us a little bit more, more than what I just said. No, oh, about me. Okay, cool. So I've been in the real estate space for like 21 years. And I say 21 because I started reading that Rich Dad, Poor Dad book in the very beginning when I was in college. And uh, there was no mentors, there's no YouTube really around during that time. So it took me like five years after reading that book to actually be able to buy my first property. And I actually paid, uh, this is a good one because in college, um, I had tuition for next semester and I took it and I paid for the rich dad, poor dad, uh, you know, the road to exiting the rat race program. And that was like 10 K. And I think from there, that's what gave me the confidence and the blueprint to be able to start buying real estate. And, um, yeah, to, you know, real estate has been, you know, my passion through that. I've been able to teach people and help other people, um, invest and uh and actually buy real estate themselves so yeah i love it i've been in the restaurant business lost my shirt in that but you know we could we could talk about that it's <laughs> but made a comeback Maybe. and yeah but Maybe. made a comeback I mean, yeah. yeah go ahead no i made a comeback and and now you know fully immersed in the multi-family multi-unit space you know hospitality and um you know big part of that is how to capital raise so yeah. my passion, though, is working with teens. So we work with uh, the Teen Millionaire Challenge with Tim Mai. Uh, I work with Olive Crest in Las Vegas for teens and families um, that are like aging out of foster homes. And I work with, uh, uh, oh, my God, with Paul Hutchinson for with, um, you know, the Child Liberation Foundation with kids that are rescued from human trafficking. Yeah, that's my passion. That's where I'll end up. <laughs> I, I love that. And I don't know if you're able to share this, but what, what made that so passionate for you? Is there a story behind that that you would like to share? Yeah. I mean, if I just look at my own past, you know, growing up and if I only had a mentor, if I had somebody like myself that could have just shown me the way, there's lots of heartbreak, lots of, uh, you know, lost my restaurant, lost all this business. I mean, these losses could have been prevented if I had somebody to show me the way. 
you know, and I would be so much further ahead now. So I just want to give back. And I've been working with 18 for two years now. Like he's really my, my right hand person. If you guys don't know, check out Nick Charmante. Literally everything that I've built in the last two years, he has been, uh, you know, really a big part of it. So, you know, working with him has been such an amazing uh, experience and I've learned a lot. So now I just want to take that model and, and help all the teens out there. That's awesome. If you haven't seen him in any of your videos, I mean, you're missing out because you, he's always <laughs> been there. He's, he's what, like, like 18? He just turned 18. So, you know, he's 17 and he's been in a, uh, he's a, I give him a little piece of all of our real estate deals. So every month actually he gets a check. He still gets checks. And so he finally now is able to receive like ACH and things like that. And that was a couple of days ago, May 4th. That's awesome. Yeah. So may the fourth be with him is what you're saying? Yes. He's a huge Star Wars fan. So. Oh, so it had to work. Had I to. mean, born on May 4th, huge Star Wars fan. Yeah, he's, he's a, a golden child. <laughs> How much would that have made a difference in your life if you would have had someone like you doing that for you? I mean, I just, I, I think about that for me, you know, in, in all areas, not just investing in real estate as well, but, you know, he went through a heartbreak with a, with a girlfriend breaking up with him and, and being able to be reguided back and focus on business and things like that. It's, for me, if, if I was to have that, I mean, that would have been, it would have been life changing, but you know, now it's just about giving back. That's, that's amazing. And for those of you who might not know, Alex has this huge following on social media. I uh -huh. think you got 135,000 and like what? a year it was more like two years i think it was two years of building up and um you know and it's it's consistency is discipline and making the videos things like that and having someone like nick be able to handle um you know the posting and responding things like that so you don't do it all yourself you have a team yes i definitely have a team i mean this is what i teach i teach i teach the teens like in the beginning, you offer your time for equity, you offer your time for for learning, right? And then you take that and, um, and and scale it and you teach other people to do it so that you can save your time and do something else with it. How I think back to like your first video, because yeah. I talk about this all the time and I'm, I'm a huge, huge failure at this. I like to say that I can tell people to, to put themselves on the internet, but sometimes it's really difficult. If you think back to your first video that you ever did oh my God. on social media, <laughs> what were you thinking? You we look that. at we look at this all the time and it's really ridiculous. It's actually kind of hard to watch. I was like, oh my God. And then the first like 10 videos were just like my big head and it was the same kind of it's it's all cut off of the same video. And um, you know, and I think for for any anybody it's just about getting started you're gonna look ridiculous you know we just have to change our relationship to looking ridiculous like yes this is what it looks like you know you go back on anybody's videos anyone that's successful on social and you look back at their first video and it's like wow that is completely different than what is posted today <laughs> it's yeah. good it's just being comfortable with being uncomfortable right yeah for sure we just change our relationship to it yeah what, what kind of um, apps are you using? Like, what are you using to edit these videos and edit your content? Yeah. So, I mean, I have a, I have a person on salary right. in the Philippines. So, you know, when I first met her, she had a job, so she can only do certain amount of videos. And I was like, how much you get paid? She's like $500 a month. I'm like, if I pay you $600 a month, I'll put you on salary right now. Will you quit your job in the next 30 days? She's like, yeah. So we've been working together for a year and a half and she's just been on salary, $600 a month. I send any video, anything that I need, I send over. If my friends need some videos, I send it over to her and it's just on salary, you know? Wow. That's yeah. pretty good. It's and then we have, VA, we have VAs that post, we have VAs that changes the, um, the, the, the image on, the, on Instagram mm -hmm. and then someone puts the caption in there and writes the descriptions. So we got a whole team and Nick runs the whole thing. Literally, 18-year-old managing like six people. It's probably the best, but he's so young because there's so many new con there's so many new platforms and content creation you have to stay up to date on. So it's probably the best to have him doing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he knows it way more than me. You know, I just, you know, and it's funny because you make all these videos in the beginning, and it's just it's tough because there's like no views, there's no engagement. And you're like, man, I put all this work in and so long. 
you know, for months just doing videos every day. And then one day out of nowhere, Nick calls me up and goes, dude, you got to check your account. I'm like, what happened? One video went viral and had like 500,000 views and gave me like 50,000 uh, followers. You know, I was like, holy crap. You know, I'm still waiting for another video to do something like that. But um, all it took was just a couple videos to do that. And then um, it started to started to really grow. That, that's awesome. But really yeah. just staying consistent with it and knowing that sometimes they're not going to hit it yeah. until you get that one. And, you know, the other thing is being really okay with, with testing, you know, testing out all the different things. Somebody's like, oh, well, you know, if you want to uh, push ads on these videos, we can get you ads. And then I realize I paid for these ads and then I'm looking at the, the, you know, the insights and I'm like, dude, these people are like averaging like two seconds on my video. I don't want this, you know, I don't want this. So then I have to cancel that and you just find all the things that doesn't work, you know, but a part of social media is one, it is, it is about your reputation. When people look at it, it's kind of like the cover of a book, right? And so they look, they're like, oh yeah, this guy's interesting. If he's got 135,000 followers, he's even more interesting, right? So I've gotten so many of those things when I meet people. In the very beginning, I was, I was embarrassed to share my Instagram. People are like, you got an Instagram? Like, yeah, but I don't really do much on it. I got like 400 followers, something like that. And now... When people, you know, ask me to exchange information, I'm like, yeah, Instagram, let's just exchange Instagram, you know, because as soon as they see the Instagram, you get that first, first uh, moment of like, you know, their, their perception of you is immediately like higher. And then you can, you know, you can talk about your deals, you can talk about anything and they're more engaged as opposed to seeing my account with like 300 followers. <laughs> so you would rather trade Instagrams and business cards? Oh, for sure. I don't even have business cards. Oh, not at all? No, not at all. Oh, my gosh. Well, maybe I've been doing something wrong then. I mean, I literally, I was just at a meetup and 15 business cards were handed to me. I, what am I, I don't even do anything with it. It's sitting here and I'm thinking about, should I throw it away or should I hold on to it? I hold on to it for a little bit, but after a while, like those business cards do really nothing. You know, right. and if it does nothing for me, then why would I hand the business cards out and, and you know, save some trees, you know, <laughs> save some trees and not do business cards. Always and the environmentalist. It, I love that. There you go. It's better. All I need is for them to click a follow and then I'm going to be in front of their face every day until they decide that they don't want to see my face anymore. <laughs> right. At least it's a better chance instead of a business card a good point i mean the whole world is like this instagram versus reality where mm -hmm. instagram is one picture but reality is not how do you stay real on instagram or on any platform that you're on so in the beginning of course you go through this like this imposter syndrome feeling right you're like teaching real estate and you're talking about nois and cap rates and all these things and it's great but everybody's doing it so then you got to figure out how you're going to set yourself apart so for for me, I talk a lot more now about like personal development, about my life, about working out, about, you know, my wife, our relationship, about God, right? So like, you know, these, th these become the things that are like, it's just my life. I don't have anything that I need to filter. Like, this is my life. This is what I talk about. This is what I'm interested in. And I'll put real estate in there as well. You know, however, we are in this kind of like transition phase where I went from all real estate to a bunch of other content. So engagement does get messed up a little bit but you know you rebuild it like i want the right people to be looking at my instagram page not like just you know i i want quality over quantity yeah. quantity i mean you have 135k yeah and, and like you know probably like majority of them don't, don't even engage in anything because it's you know it came from this one giant video that was successful and you know i don't know how many times people can see my face so, you know, now we're, we're moving towards like a lot more call to action things on our video, right? So it's like, give them something to do. Like my video, comment this, you know, and you ask what, what other things do we use? Like many chats is a huge thing that we use because we say, hey, comment the word mentor, comment the word invest, comment the word Vegas, and automatically they get something. You got to figure out how to automate things as you grow. And you might as well figure that out like now, you know, before you get big. Otherwise, it gets crazy. You know, I came, I don't even want to open up my, um, 
my messages on Instagram because it's it's just so many. A majority of them are also like people asking to do things for you and this and that. So you got to now start to hire VAs and stuff to filter through those things. And as much automation as you can get, it's better. So how are you doing? Is that that's a software that you add on and then yeah. you have a free something that you're giving out to anyone who likes or comments on a certain word yeah we'll give them the information the video will be about something right i'll talk about vegas and what's coming to vegas hey if you're interested in vegas deals just comment the word vegas and then automation the many chat automation sends them to the page where they get to put their email in and it goes into a smart page in our crm a smart tag and everything is about building up the crm yeah, there is really nothing more important in your business than the CRM. I think. That's perfect. Yes. I totally agree. It's where you get everything. It's where you find out everything about any potential investor. Mm -hmm. They don't know that you have all of this on them, but. Yeah. It, it, what's important is you put them in the smart tags where they belong, right? Because like I, a lot of people that I meet, I just end up getting their me emails. I'm like, I didn't even opt in for anything. How am I getting all these emails, right? Like you don't just want to stick somebody in there because it's all it does is it gets you unsubscribe and an unsubscribe actually still stays in your CRM and it's going to end up costing you more money as you go to, you know, 5,000, 10,000, 20,000 people in the list. It just costs more money. And then you got all these people that are unsubscribed. It's just, it's not worth the work, right? You got to work efficiently. Yeah. Work harder, not smarter or smarter, mm -hmm. not harder. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, so when you were doing your first capital raise, how mm -hmm. much was social media helping you or hurting you? Oh, I mean, almost, I would say majority of credibility came from social media, mm -hmm. you know, and when I was talking about deals, like, you know, it was very hot during that time as well. Like this is in, you know, two and a half, three years ago where everybody was trying to get into deals. Every deal was, you know, great because interest rates were low. And it was just this big trend happening. Now in today's market, everybody is tight. Everyone's holding on to their money, right? So it becomes harder and more challenging. And you gotta, you have to stand out, right? I mean, if we all have, if everybody's got the same deal, same return, same everything, like how do you stand out? And that becomes I mean, the question. It's the truth though, because really the deals are all the same. Yeah, it looks all the same, but can you paint a story? Like it's all about the story. Like, how is it, how is it different? Like my story is, look, I'm focused all on downtown Las Vegas. When, do, when is there ever an opportunity in your lifetime or in anywhere that you can be part of a redevelopment of the entire downtown, anywhere in the country, nowhere. Right. And so like, I'm painting this whole story because in Las Vegas, there's also the team, all these teams coming. I'm just get, getting, you know, like jumping onto the backs of all these big institutional level players. And here I am, I have this opportunity, you know, and as I only focus here, every single deal that I do here increases the value of my previous deal, right? So like, for example, we have a 30 unit that we closed right in downtown Las Vegas, the story is amazing. And we, and we talk about, you know, what we're going to do right around it. So now we have another deal right across the street. It's a hotel, right? Hotel, we get that done. Now we can also, the story now becomes the, the employees, we can share employees, cutting expenses on both sides. And then for the deal, for the 30 unit deal, now we can share amenities. We have pool, a bar, a gym for this 30 unit that didn't have any amenities. Now we can charge more. If we charge more, you know, the, 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 um, the 30 unit, its evaluation is higher. And then also we'll create some sort of lease for the pool from there to here. So now the hotel gets more money. So, you know, as we build that um, synergy and all the properties in that area, like the story is great, right? So that stands out versus like, so, I got a deal in yeah. Texas, I got a deal in Georgia, then I got a deal in North Carolina. And if I just, you know, go around doing all that, it doesn't really stand out because everybody's doing it, you know? Right. And everyone's doing the same raise. We're all trying to get the same investors and the same group of people. What do you do <laughs> after the raise? After the raise, like, how do you connect that story? You talked about you have another property. What if you don't have a property across the street? How are you still connecting that story with your content? 
Yeah, I mean, everyone, you're going to be different. Like, what is your specialty? What, how do you, how does your team different from another team? You got to find that story. I don't know what that's going to be, right? But like, you know, somebody can be specialized in, you know, NOI boosting things, right? Like things that you can boost NOIs. Like we are exclusive to this internet company that can come in and add 30 to $70 to every single unit. Right, we're gonna do this here, and this is what we do to all of our buildings, and it's guaranteed basically a two million dollar evaluation just by implementing this in there. I mean, there are so many different ways. You just gotta find out what the story is because this is how you raise money after retail investors. You know, retail investors, it's so hard today to find any retail investors. Everybody's struggling. Right. If you look at the macro picture, you have the government. And then you have the 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 um, uh, you have the banks, and then you have the Federal Reserve, and these three they play with each other, and uh, and and you have your large banks, and then you have your community and small banks, which the small banks like there's I think ten thousand different small banks and regional banks they own about three point four trillion dollars of assets to- total together. JP Morgan by themselves own 3.4 billion uh, trillion in in assets. Right? So it's kind of balanced right now, but all the smaller banks are struggling because they have majority commercial real estate assets. And those deals are struggling, the banks are going to struggle. All the money across the board is going to come down and the important thing is as regional and smaller banks are stressed and struggling, that means less funding for businesses in those communities. Right. That means people are going to be laid off. There's going to be a lot of impact from that, like from the macro level that is going to affect the ability for your retail investors to be able to invest with you. So then where do we find the money now? Right. Like Mm -hmm. I think private equity, I think family offices, I think these are the people that are going to have to step in in order to really save our economy. Otherwise, JP Morgan's going to come and just scoop up everything. Otherwise, BlackRock is going to come in and scoop up everything. And they just get bigger. It's good. It's it's happening, you know. So how do we position ourselves so that we can perform the best for our investors? We can perform the best for the communities itself. It's all about impact, you know. I, for me personally, it's impact over profit, and then really impact is the most profitable uh, model, actually. I think. Okay. All right. So how are you continuing this impact? I mean, you have a, you have a hotel right now, correct? Mm -hmm. That you're raising on. Yeah. So how are you creating that impact right now? So if you think about like, so for our 30 unit deal, obviously we knew that market rents are like 1150, 1200 and the average is 896 right now. We don't just go in and just immediately say, Hey, market rents is 1250. So you're, when you renew it's 1250, right? Like the impact is we go and say, what do you guys need? What do you guys want? We People just want their voices to be heard, right? They'll feel like they're important and then they'll feel like they're a part of this community and the decision making. They're like, oh, well, you know, we don't really, we need more furniture in this area, in the middle, in the common area. Okay, cool. Immediately we switched out the cushions. We made it nicer and more comfortable. And then people are like, oh, we have a little bit of mold and leak here. We go and fix all these things. And then we say, all right, the first step is we've been paying your utilities. Okay, everything is ex- more expensive. So at least you're going to take back the utilities. And if you do it and you sign this contract for a year for the next, you know, in, in, be, be, before the month is over, then you can keep your rents the same. And then now we actually increased our NOI by $100 a unit right there. Now, if you do it after, it's going to go up to market rents. And they're like, okay. So we got about half the people did it immediately. Half the people are still kind of sitting there and they're going to get the market rents. But we're putting amenities in place. We're always there, like making sure that people's voices and their opinions and what they want is is heard. I think that's really important. So impact, like we want to make sure they're happy with the, with their where they're living, and then that's more profitable because if you don't, what's going to happen is people are just going to move out, and then your ability, yes, you might be able to increase the rents, but you get turnover. Right. So now you're going to have two months of turnover. Then you got to pay a leasing agent or your property management money just to put somebody else in. And that's actually where they make the most money. Property management companies make the most money when new people come in, when new leases are signed, 
which is the opposite as you as an owner. I know. Because that's the most expensive thing for you. It's the most expensive thing for you and it's the most profitable thing for a property manager. So how do you manage that? Right. So that's the that's the that, that's something that's in, in, impactful. And then for, you know, when we go out to raise, I share the entire vision of what I'm trying to do. You know, amazing deal right here. You know, it's a 10 cap fully renovated. Where do you find that in the country? Nowhere. OK, cool. Well, besides that, once we get this, we're going to be there's going to be an LOI given to us for the entire city block across the street. You know, we're in the good, we're in good favors with the Tony Shea estate, like the entire picture is being painted. And the cool thing about raising capital, right? One, you need capital for the deal. But two, you have an opportunity to share your vision with other people, you get to plant seeds. So during this raise right here, yes, it's been challenging. And I'm committed not to do a syndication like, like, like a raise. You know, not not that it's bad at all, but it's just I'm committed to reaching the next level for me. Mm -hmm. So I've been able to talk to 25, 30 different family offices where they got to hear my vision. Even though they were not in and they're like, but if you get to every time they're like, I, I ask, what would make it a deal that you guys would invest into? Right. And this is the same thing you want to do with retail investors. What would make it something you would say yes so then they give me their box, I write it down, and now I have the buy box and the lend box of 25, 30 different family offices. You know, and then actually there are so many cool like little groups that have multiple family offices in their group. Right? It's a family offices. And so I'm like, what do you guys do? What do you where, what do you guys lend on? You know, so their boxes, what are they buying so that I can match like in the future, anything that I do, can I add that to the story so that I know who to go to? Hey, remember when we talked last time and uh, we didn't get this deal closed? Well, we have this now and I know you guys like this. Boom. Right. So there's there's so many different things and it just gave me the opportunity to do that. Like your capital raising gives you the chance to share your story and, and put your name out there. Plant seeds with everyone. And continue that story. So right mm -hmm. when the raise is done, you're still talking about the property. You're still talking about what you're doing because that's leading other investors who might have missed out on that opportunity. It's giving them some information for the next one. Yes. I mean, you, your con ongoing story is great because whether they're retail or private or family offices, once you've asked them to invest in the deal, you've put like, they're going to ask you next time. Hey, how'd that deal go? Right. So you better make sure that you got a good story to tell before you go back to them. Right. Not like, oh my God, I just lost that deal. <laughs> They're gonna right. never gonna talk to you again. So exactly. yeah, it's, you it's can't a just game. you it's can't be just be done with it. You gotta keep it up. Mm -hmm. You're gonna keep those relationships. It's all about trust at the end of the day. People yes. you're you're trusting, they're putting their trust in you, but you're trusting them. It's a it's a relationship. Mm -hmm. And how can they trust you? Well, you have the social media to back them up, back you up. Yes. So social media and do what you say you're going to do, right? Like if you, if you're like, I'm going to close this deal, they're watching you. Once you, once you ask them, they're going to be watching you, right? They're going to be watching you. So it's, you know, it's, uh, this is how you can actually escalate really fast because I also know that majority of these family offices, they can stroke a $1 billion check right now. And I'm like, okay, well, what would need to be in place in order for that to be stroked, right? Now you can elevate yourself. And as you go and, and network with people, you can actually have the confidence to say, oh, this is a 300 unit deal you guys got in Texas. I know somebody that can come in, right? Like you're working both ends as a capital raiser. If you're going to come in and be an, of, of an asset to a team, well, you know, bring me into this deal. I have these connections. You know, and uh, and then you bring this deal over to them. Make sure you package the story really well. Make sure you also vet the 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 team really well because now your reputation is on the line both ways, right? So, and then you bring you bring one big family office in. Yeah, you're gonna get a big chunk of the deal. You're gonna be a a main player at least on the next deal. People are gonna be like, everyone's gonna be coming after you. Be the LeBron James oh, yeah. of 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 multifamily. <laughs> Because that's the goal, to be the LeBron James of multifamily. To be the LeBron James of anything is the goal. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> let's pretend you didn't have family office though. Let's pretend mm -hmm. you didn't have that. How are you talking to these investors? Are you still saying the same thing that you would say to the family office groups? Are you still saying what, what makes you want to invest in this deal? Why aren't you investing in this deal? Are you still treating it, whether they have a million dollars or $50,000? It's the same thing. It's actually the same thing. Now, with retail investors, it's a little bit harder because th that money, they're not, they've, it took a long time for them to earn that money, right? It's hard right. earned money for these family offices. They're actually like, oh, where do we place our money? They're always looking for that. They got too much of it, right? So it's a little bit different. Um, but with family offices, you're competing with a lot of people, which is kind of the same with, with retail too, because, you know, all these, all the, all the, operators and syndicators are kind of dipping into the same pool so every day is an enrollment day every day is capital raising day regardless if you have a deal or not especially if you don't have a deal i think it's it's capital raise day okay so that's the that's the point you hit on so if someone's in between a raise what mm -hmm. are you talking about you're talking about your deals that you've done, the returns that you're giving to your investors, your knowledge about the market, your knowledge about increasing NOI and evaluations, your knowledge about the debt market, right? The more you're talking about something, if I'm, if I'm gonna in, uh, uh, you know, talk about multifamily and I'm gonna raise money for that, I'm gonna talk about everything I can in there, right? I will walk properties and every day, somebody that you've asked to invest with you is looking at your content. It's like, wow, okay, that makes sense. When I have 50,000, 100,000, I probably wanna invest there. You know, I think about it myself, when I look at people's content, like who caught my attention and why am I watching this all the time? They're, they're displaying an area of expertise that I'm like, either I want them on my team or when I have the extra disposable income, I actually feel comfortable investing with them, right? So like, that's another tie-in of social media and that like, you're telling a story, like who's your avatar? Every video you make, you're talking to this person. You know, one person, like one ideal person that you have in your mind, you're talking to them. And then at some point, they're gonna say, yeah, let's invest. I mean, I've had so many countless people from Instagram ask me, Instagram and LinkedIn, Hey, do you have a deal that you, that, that we can invest into right now? You know, I actually had somebody on Instagram early on that asked me, they have 700,000 to invest into a deal. They invested a hundred, they invested 300,000 with me from Instagram. Never met this person before. Okay. So like, yeah, I mean, I think majority of my money, if it wasn't for social media, I would not have raised, you know, I right. mean, in the, in the beginning, my first deal with some of the, the members of Massive Capital, um, you know, we bought us a storage, the industrial storage. When I, when I was like immersed in that group, like in that 10X community, I literally went around everywhere. Like I have money and I have investors, you know, like who wants, who wants me? I'm, I'm a free agent, you know? And, and yeah, I was, you know, short of wearing a shirt that said that, I literally was like blasting that out. You know, and Mike and, and John and them just like, I was like, all right, well, you know, you want to come join us on this? I invested with some people also as an LP just to try to like, you know, make my way in there. But, um, you know, once we got that deal, I, had, I knew I had about $700,000 like pent up of people that wanted to invest. And then that deal, I think I raised like a million dollars. And I was done. I don't have nobody else. It's all friends and family done a million dollars, you know? So then we raised for, for two more deals after that. And then I, and then I raised 1.7 million in 30 days in another deal. And then another like $4 million. Like it was all because social media, I feel like. Like people at that time were like, oh my God. Who's this Alex coming onto the scene? And then all of a sudden this like 500, I, I, we were in a, a raw cleaf event and I, yep. we went to visit this, like, I don't know, this property that was like terrible. The cap rate was terrible. The NOI was terrible. What they're asking was terrible. And I literally stood in front of the building, talked about why we wouldn't buy this deal and how much we would buy this deal for. It was very like rudimentary, really, really basic. And it was, it blew up on Instagram and blew up on TikTok.
And overnight, I didn't even have TikTok downloaded on my phone. And Nick was like, you need to open your TikTok. 516,000 views, 8,000 new followers, you know, and it's just like, that's what it takes. You got to keep being consistent until that moment that something pops. You know, just know that it's going to come. If you're consistent long enough, something's going to pop. And consistent, but also with being authentic. Yes. All of your content is 100% authentic. Oh, yeah. I yeah. do love watching your content because I know you're not, you're, you're not lying to us. You're not yeah. saying this just because you're trying to get investors. Yeah. Uh, you know, right now, and, and you continue to do things that are just of value to people, right? I, when I go, when I do a, my Monday night calls, like people don't feel like I'm trying to pitch them or sell them on anything. It's literally just like, here is value. Take it, do what you want with it. We're going to do a, a breakout room. You guys can go and meet. And people have met and bought real estate together. People have met and formed other Zoom calls that are competing against mine. People have become business partners in there. And I'm just like, awesome. I just, you know, I, I cheer for them. I champion them. If you can just right, practice cause... championing everybody, I think that's a great practice too. Yeah, because com competing is not going to get you anywhere. You can, only, <laughs> you can only do so much. As long as we're all connecting and helping each other then we're all winning yes for sure so let's let's think about the community here who's listening and they're getting started in capital raising they're getting started in social media what are the first steps just to getting started and just growing their instagram following from a couple hundred mm -hmm. i think the first thing is talk to friends and family right get feedback about what why they don't want to invest with you what do they need more of? What do they need to hear more of? You, you, they might tell you, I don't know. Do you have enough experience in this? Like you were just, you know, working at Starbucks and then now you're going to be an owner of a 200 unit. Like what? They don't get it. You know, so then you're like, oh, okay. So that's the wall. I just have to edify my team now. Right. And, and maybe it looks like, uh, you know, I'm investing into this deal and I'm investing my time and I'm going to be working with these guys. Like, I think it's a great deal. Do you want to take a look at it? And then like leverage, right? Leverage your team. I think it's important to leverage people that are already doing it. If you can get onto a team, like if you could be a part of massive capitals deals, either as an LP or a GP, like it gives you credibility, right? You guys are all over the place. So at least when somebody looks you looks massive capital up, it's associated with you. You don't need you don't even need to look you up because you're like, right. yeah, I don't know. I'm just investing with them. I'm working with them, you know, and this is a great deal. So I'm putting my money in here. And then you start that way, like very organic. I, I truly believe organic is still the best to start, you know, and then once you've got the organic down and you have track record now, now put money behind it. Put money into ads, put money into, you know, getting your CRM going, getting your investor list going, getting your landing page, your website. Like those are all important things that people look at. And then when somebody looks at anything, the first like three seconds is all you got to catch somebody's attention. Can you do it? Isn't that horrible? Mm -hmm. I mean, you're competing. You're you're think about what you're competing with, right? Like right. you you just Go online. I'm not just competing with, you know, when I put my content out, I'm not just competing with you, Maria, or everybody no. else that's doing real estate. I'm competing against like the NBA. I'm competing against the playoffs that's going on. I'm competing with Taylor Swift and all the other content. Oh, because you're competing people, against the next everybody. dance trend too. Like whatever yeah, dance everything. trend is going on, no one's really doing real estate. They're just trying to think of whatever trend is happening right now. Uh huh. You're competing against Mr. Beast, like for attention. You know, so that's why you got such a short period. And how can you just be more interesting? You know, and people that follow you, like, how loyal are they to you? <laughs> you know, right. like you're about it's and, and you get loyalty by giving loyalty. So, yeah, so I think that's how you start. You ask that question of how somebody starts, mm -hmm. put some content out on social media for sure. Just be consistent with it. Because it's going to take time. Time will change the naysayers' minds, right? Because in the beginning, people are like, Alex, what are you doing? You, you, ha you own the restaurant. You were doing personal development coaching thing. And then all of a sudden, you're d doing these real estate deals. Now, everybody's like, everyone thinks about me. And they're just like, okay, real estate deals.
Right. Right. They're thinking, they think about Alex like, oh, Vegas. Anybody doing deals in Vegas, you got to meet Alex. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, but I position myself and it takes time for everyone to, to recognize you as that, it's to build a brand in that space. It takes time. However, not that much time. No, I mean, I think really. I met you maybe two years ago. Yeah, maybe. I, I can't remember. Time is flying and staying still at the same time. So. <laughs> hasn't taken you that long to get this big i mean when 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 were you owning the restaurant six years ago okay so that's seven years ago i lost everything four hundred thousand dollars in debt 400 400 credit score i lost everything i lost my house i lost my car my car got repoed that was interesting um i i had to cancel my verizon plan because 200 dollars a month was too much my friend let me live in a utility closet in Florida that my Murphy bed comes down and the front door doesn't open. I put my Murphy bed up and then I can open the front door to go outside. You know, like I was there. I know what it feels like. And so that's why I'm so passionate about teaching and mentoring because like when people have financial struggles, it literally, I know what that felt like. I know what it feels like to not want to answer any phone calls, especially when it's like a number I don't know. I know it's a collector somebody that's coming to collect. I don't look at my mail. I don't open my emails. I'm like scared to walk out the door, right? Like all sorts of like, and just being like face down, you can't do anything anymore. There's a point that I was like face down on my kitchen floor. Like, this is it. I'm done. You know, everything's done. I know what that feels like. Can't sleep at night, you know, because you're just like, you wake up and you just think about your financials. So that really, that part of it, like I know what that's like. And I have to leverage that now, right? I have to connect with the audience, with people that have gone through something like that so that they know, okay, well, Alex knows that, right? I I so appreciate that you share your failures. I think that's so important. People don't share their failures at all. People are, it's it's like, (laughs) Alex, it's not easy. It's not easy. It's it's actually pretty easy. It feels good when there's, because, the, the more you do it, the more people come to you and reaffirm like, wow, that vulnerability was so like meaningful, you know, and it becomes easier and easier to just be more authentic and people appreciate authenticity. They will come around you and they will champion you if you're authentic. I'm glad you mentioned that because I feel like break points are so difficult. There's usually every person who's been on this stage who I've talked to in real estate, they've all had that moment, that moment where they either were done or they turned and made on 180 flip and went in the other direction. So Mm -hmm. how did you get to that point where you could share your story? I mean, yes, it's impactful and yes, you're sharing it and you're changing so many lives, but how did you get past to that moment of, fear and sharing it and actually doing it or I think just- it's just a tribe of people I mean I've had practice doing this you know I've coached a lot of people so I know what it takes you know to to actually heal from your own fears like you share it you share mm-hmm. it with people so that you get support you get the support that you need you know like Shirar and Mike and and Jasmine like everybody has been championing me and supporting me when I struggled like if I don't share it, I will, it, the chances of me making it past that is literally like none, right? So you get to a point where it's like, you need to share it so that somebody can support you. Somebody can give you a different perspective, you know? And so someone like that's- can grow and learn. Like even Jasmine said she met you when she had more followers than you. <laughs> yeah, that was fun. Um, yeah, and I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed to show my Instagram or anything at that time. Yeah. But you know what? (laughs) One of the things I said that's been pretty funny this past couple weeks, I've been speaking on a lot of different little stages. I was like, you know, when you do multifamily and you do real estate long enough, you're going to find God. Mm. Because there will be so many moments where you just don't know what the outcome is going to be. Your money's on the line. Your reputation's on the line. Your like relationships are all on the line. And the only thing you can do is pray. You know, I'm just like, yeah, you do this long enough, you will find God. You are going to pray. <laughs> oh, so true. I mean, you also do, you run A Course in Miracles. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is such a, one of your inspiring books. But tell us a little bit about that because it's such an impactful 
uh, Wednesday and Sunday morning. Mm. I think you're still doing them in the mornings. Can you you share a little bit about A Course in Miracles? Yeah, A Course in Miracles is a book that is the entire purpose of it. One is to help you find inner peace with all the things that are going on in your life. Your relationship to the material things, your relationships in your life with people, your family, your significant others. And the course, the the entire, really the, the problems, any problem, any anxiety, any judgments and anything that we ever have, the course says it's just our disconnection to God. We have disconnected the will of God and our individual wills. Right? It's like, I think I want this to happen for me. It's like, we really have no idea what's best for us. Right? We think that I want this deal to close and that would be what's best for me. But you know, there are other plans. Maybe it doesn't close because you're not supposed to be in that partnership. Maybe you needed to learn something. Right? So we never really know. So it's just about trusting and having deeper faith and then being able to take, and on our calls, we take all of our problems and our challenges and our relationships and investments and all of that and we bring it to the table and we talk about trust and faith we talk about where the ego wants something and spirits like i don't know if that's what you want all right and then just trusting there's really only two teachers one teacher is the ego the other teacher is the holy spirit and one produces conflict the other one produces peace and that's the only choice we ever have in life is do we follow the teachings of the ego, which is always going to create conflict, separation, fear, guilt, shame, you know, judgment, and just propels that. Or you give it over to Holy Spirit and know that these things that you think that you're carrying on your shoulders don't actually belong to you. And so eventually it leads to more compassion, it leads to more peace, more love. And so every, every Wednesday and every Sunday, we just remind each other that. And most of it is probably just me, like, you know, like purging out my problems and my issues and everybody's just holding a space for me. <laughs> and but then hey, we learn together. That's, there we go. Yeah, yeah. Learn together. I mean, I think there's been a shift in your content when you started A Course in Miracles to now. I mean, you can really see the passion behind it. You can mm-hmm. see the and the truth that is portrayed in your content, which is why I love following you. And I hope people who are listening later, I hope they follow see that that authenticity with you yeah thank you thank you yeah i was actually you know it wasn't until sometime in the middle of last year that i decided that i would publicly start talking about course in miracles really yeah i mean i've been teaching it for four years i've had people on my zooms like hundreds of people have come through the zooms for the course of miracles our community is pretty big every time we do a call at least 22 25 people are on there and then hundreds of people mm-hmm. on social are watching right so like it's impactful. And then the crazy thing is when I made that switch, people told me that they're investing with me because of that call. If you really? look at my if you look at my LinkedIn, my LinkedIn has nothing about real estate, nothing about business, and it's all a course of miracles. And it's just so different from anyone else's LinkedIn page. You know, it says, "Oh, real estate investor, mentor, whatever all these things." And then it's like if you look at my content, it's all, whoa, what's this? Like giving things over to God, deepening your faith. And they're like, whoa, what is this? And they catch it and they're like, that was exactly what I needed to hear. You know, and from that place, it's like, it's, uh, yeah, it's amazing. It has, it has changed my life. You know, I live my whole life off of the teachings of A Course in Miracles and Unity Church. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you for sharing that. And Lisa has some comment too. She wants to know how to get a course in miracles. I purchased my copy off of Amazon. Yes. So you can, uh, you can, you can do that. It's hard to, it's hard to study though. It's hard to study by yourself. This is why it's important to, you know, to, to hop on these calls and study together because the, the, the content in there is deep. You know, there's a joke that a course in miracles, one of the, highest selling books that just sits on people's bookshelves and collects the most dust really? like everybody has a course of miracles on there and <laughs> and um in their bookshelves and it's just never been opened or it's open once for the people who are listening on um later on how can they follow your course and follow your teachings on a course of miracles 
Yeah, you can go to um. Let's see. <laughs> I'll I'll put I just threw the link in the chat real quick, but you know you can register there. You can find it I think on my page at Alex Lovely. You can scan this QR code, and I believe you'll find it somewhere in there. It's also uh, on your Instagram. Oh yes, it's on my Instagram. Uh, yeah, I think that's uh that's where you would find it. It's it's one of my passions. I think down the road, like what I really just want to do. Actually, yeah, you go to alexlovely.com and literally there's a registration for A Course in Miracles. It's yeah. my most loved call that I do. And I think eventually I'm just going to do like five hour radio shows of it <laughs> and just have people call in and um, really have a radio show around it. But it's the building blocks of how you're helping people create financial freedom. So it's a, it's awesome to get to hear you talk about that. If you haven't been on A Course in Miracles, I would go. It is so inspiring just to hear Alex talk. So that is super, super amazing. It's live on Instagram. It's live on Facebook, yep. live on LinkedIn. If you just want to like check out any of them, just go to my Facebook, go to my LinkedIn. All the previous recordings are on those pages. Click on any of them. And uh, it's, it's a blast. It's awesome. Well, Alex, thank you so much for today. And thanks for giving us the courage to step out on our own and really take take social media and really run with it. I really appreciate having you here today. Yeah. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Love it. No. So I know Alex talked about how much a CRM is and why he uses it and why it's the most important, most important part about raising capital. We do have a CRM with massive capital. It's called client Harbor. We have a 14 day trial. If you scan that QR code, it will help you just get started in your CRM. If you don't have one, you need one, and we want to help you get that. CRM is how you're going to connect with your investors and make sure you're really getting really getting the best connection with your investors for the deals and really helping them in investing. We have a coaching program, A Pathway to GP. If you'd like to learn more about how we became general partners and how you can too, there is a coaching program, massive.capital forward slash coaching. And tomorrow... Um, May 10th at 8 a.m. Central Time, we are doing VCon, a virtual conference where you are going to have nonstop learning all day. I mean, you got to be there. I know Neil Bawa is speaking, Rod Khalif is speaking. We've got some heavy hitters speaking, and you do not want to miss it. If you want to jumpstart yourself in real estate, tomorrow is where you want to be. So thank you so much. Thank you, Alex. And I'll let you have the last words. Oh, no, you're good. Thank you. I, I'm just <laughs> okay. so grateful to be here <laughs> and have this opportunity to share. Thank you, Alex. Mm -hmm. My name is Maria Marks, and this has been Massive Masters Raising Private Capital. Thank you, everyone, and we'll see you in two weeks. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Later.